Hello there. The West Bank town of Bethlehem, about six miles south of Jerusalem, has a population of around 25,000, making it a bit smaller than Stroud. It's now run by the Palestinian National Authority, though it's hemmed in on all sides by newly built and expanding Jewish settlements. It's basically famous for one event. This was the town, much smaller in those days of course, where Jesus was born to Mary during the reign of Herod the Great. One Christmas, a century and a half ago, an American preacher named Phillips Brooks visited Bethlehem and the experience inspired him to write the words of one of our best-loved Christmas hymns, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. His verses capture not only Bethlehem's atmosphere, but also the paradoxes surrounding that event that marks the town's place in history. He envisages the whole population contentedly enjoying a deep and dreamless sleep, unaware of momentous events unfolding in their vicinity. Their insignificant settlement becomes the pivot of history with the birth of God's Son. Angels announce his birth, but nobody, nobody in town is listening. If you want to find anyone paying attention, read Luke's account. Living outside the town and beyond the pale of polite society, there's a group of shepherds and they do show up looking for the newborn child. And this is God's moment. The baby born there is described as a wondrous gift silently given as God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven, peace to all on earth. It's certainly worth celebrating. But a few years back another version of O Little Town was written an ironic parody of the well-known words. Here's the third verse. How violently, how violently the hope of peace is riven. Can God impart to these torn hearts the blessings of his heaven? Who now recalls his coming to this dark world of sin? Where harsh words still promote ill will, can Christ now enter in? Bethlehem has in recent times been the site of harsh conflict. Militant action and official military counter-action have disturbed the sleep of the town's recent residents. Yet this brings out another paradox. I mentioned that Jesus was born during the reign of Herod, a cruel despot who tried to have this child murdered because someone tipped him off that this baby was born King of the Jews which Herod saw as his role. Bethlehem may have been a sleepy town, but it wasn't cosy or safe even then. And the Christmas baby, sometimes called the Prince of Peace, came into a world which, like our own age, was far from truly peaceful. When God came to earth, he came right into the rough and tumble of human history and felt life at the sharp end. The original carol goes on to say that where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. To drive that point home, the final verse begins with a prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. Not literally, of course. This Jesus was a historical person who arrived by a typically messy human birth, who lived a human life and died a gruesome and brutal death. Yet because he was and is God's son, he was raised from the dead and is still alive today. Not only that, we can know him for ourselves. As Jesus said shortly before his trial and crucifixion, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching my Father will love them and we will come and make our home with them. That's the sense in which the carol means, be born in us today. Whoever trusts in Jesus, letting him take control of their lives, experiences a close and personal encounter with the gracious, loving, yet demanding man this baby became. The Jesus whose story is told in the New Testament Gospel accounts. 
and Christians will confirm that however grim life becomes, however little outward peace there is, the message of Christmas rings true. The hopes and fears of all the years were met in Bethlehem and are still met where Jesus comes to abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, born among us, we remember the Christmas angels proclaiming your holy birth, and we recognise with joy how God's everlasting light shone in the dark streets of Bethlehem that first Christmas. Thank you that you felt life at its harshest, and that the news of your birth and death and resurrection is still good news for a world damaged by sin. May we be aware this Christmas of you, present with us now, just as then. Amen. Until next time, take care and trust God. <laughs>